I think I'm a romantic in that I always hope for the best. Whatever romance that we can all bring into our lives, I certainly look for that. There are romances I love that have no more than a kiss in them, and they might be as sexy as a book that's, you know, all out. Hi, I'm Lori Gold. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Welcome to my home. I made the switch to romance novels in 1994. My husband and I went away for the weekend, and I had stopped off at the bookstore to pick up a book, and I had picked up just out of chance a romance novel and just fell in love with it so much so that before we made the trip back home I made us go to another bookstore to buy more books by that author Catherine Coulter and the book was The Sherbrooke Bride. What I remember about that book was that the characters were extremely vivid and it just came to life. My favorite romance author is Julie Garwood. My favorite Julie Garwood novel is called Castles. It was the first time I'd read a romance that was funny, instead of being serious. My favorite novel of all time is called Too Deep for Tears, written by Katherine Lynn Davis. I can remember the first time reading Too Deep for Tears it was on a beach in Hawaii, and I was crying so badly that my husband thought something was really wrong with me. People believe that all romance novels are alike, that they're interchangeable. But a really good author can take a stock situation or a character type and they can make that book seem fresh. The typical romance novel hero, I like to say that if most, of, if most women I know actually met one, they'd go screaming for the hills. They're bigger than life, often quite arrogant. They can be very tortured souls and therefore not necessarily very kind. Thinking about heroines is a little different than heroes. I really like someone who seems more real. I spent the first several years uh, reading romance and even writing about it ashamed because of the way, you know, it's viewed in the public. But as the years have gone by and I realized that, you know, everybody reads them even if they don't know it or their mother reads them or their sister reads them, that I don't care what other people think anymore. This is a book that I loved from last year. It's called The Ice Storm and it's by Anne Stewart and her romantic suspense is pretty far out there in terms of the fact that her heroes are very much anti-heroes. I like to call them heroes on the edge. He is an assassin, and the heroine is the head of a secret spy agency who was sent to extract him, and it turns out that they share a history. One of the reasons why I love this book is that the last page is just perfect. Both characters stay true to themselves throughout the whole book, and so it's not like they all all of a sudden become lovey-dovey. These are hard people. This is The Real Deal by Lucy Monroe. Well, this is actually a second copy. The first copy's been read so many times that it's pretty much falling apart. This is a story where the heroine is sent up to negotiate a business deal between her company and a family-owned company, but a major stockholder who is a scientist is against the whole thing. He's that sexy, scientist who lives on an island in Puget Sound, and he just sounds great. What, what really works so well is that both of these characters are people who really have not fit into their worlds, and when they find each other, they do. And there's a part at the end, they say, you know, we may not fit with the rest of the world, but we fit with each other. I think romance novels are a good place to go to escape for a while. If it's a romp, then I'm gonna be laughing. If it's a sad story, then I can look forward to crying. <laughs> what I like about romance is that it gives me a happily ever after, a happy ending. And, you know, in the world we live in, that's a kind of nice thing to look forward to.